Welcome and thank you for standing by. All lines are in a listen-only mode until the question and answer session. At that time, please press star 1 and record your name as prompted. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn today's meeting over to Tanya McGinnis. Thank you. You may begin. Great. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone, and to those who are on the West Coast, um, good morning. And welcome to the Fiscal Year 2022 Small Dollar Loan Program Application Webinar. Again, my name is Tanya McGinnis. I am the Program Manager for the CDFI Funds Depository Institutions Initiative, and we're the business unit within the CDFI Fund that manages the Small Dollar Loan Program. As a reminder, participants will be muted until we open uh, the phone lines for questions at the end of the presentation. So for Julie, if you can go to the next slide, please. Hold on one second, please. Julie, can you advance to the next slide, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Julie. I guess I'm not seeing that one. Um, so uh, let's talk. Um, let's go over the agenda, um, and then we, we're going to jump right on in. So uh, for today's webinar, I'm going to give you an, an introduction of the staff. Um, give you a quick overview of the CDFI fund, as well as an overview of the Small Dollar Loan Program. Uh, Small Dollar Loan Program. We'll talk a little bit about application logistics. We'll, get, we'll give an overview of the application and provide um, updates to this year's application. Um, share some important reminders with you, as well as contact information. And then we'll go to the questions. Next slide, please. So um, Depository Institutions Initiative is now a staff of four. Um, we've grown rapidly just in the past couple of weeks. So um, um, you'll hear, soon you'll hear from Julie Sandler. Um, she is our Senior Management and Program Analyst. She's been with us um, a little over a year now. Uh, Mike Fulton is new to the team, and he, uh, Mike uh, joined us about two months ago. So we're um, very excited to have him on this team. He's our management and program analyst. And then our newest uh, staff person, Amy Apitz, uh, actually joined us last week. Um, and um, also excited to have her on the team. Amy is also a management and program analyst. Uh, the next slide is, is the, uh, the mission statement for the CDFI fund. I'm not going to read it here. I'm pretty sure many, um, many of the participants, if not all the participants on the call, um, are very familiar with the, the CDFI fund and its mission. The next, the next slide is uh, where I want to spend a little bit of time just going over uh, or providing an overview of the, the program, the Small Dollar Loan Program. And the program was actually authorized in 2010 as part of the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. Uh, we did not receive appropriations for it until 2020, 10, 10 years later. Uh, the program was created to help uh, CDFIs address the issue of high-cost um, small-dollar loans to provide, a, or more specifically, to, pro to provide an alternative to, um, to high-cost small-dollar loans and to um, also help the bank, unbanked and underbanked um, build credit, access affordable capital, as well as um, um, gain, gain greater access into the mainstream financial system. For this year's funding round, we have a little over $11 million available. Program eligibility um, is all based on the statute, and so per the statute, um, our awards can only support new and existing small dollar loan programs that offer small dollar loans to consumers that do not exceed $2,500. Uh, 
where the, the, the payments must be repaid in, in installments. There cannot be any prepayment penalties, and the payments must be reported to at least one of the credit bureau agencies, and the, um, the, the loans must be underwritten with standards that consider the, the consumer's um, ability to repay. The eligible uses um, per the statute are that the loans can be used for loan loss reserves to cover losses on small dollar loans associated with starting a new small dollar loan program or ex expanding an existing small dollar loan program. Our award can also be used for technical assistance, for technology, staff support, and other costs with the um, cost associated, again, with um, establishing a new small dollar loan program or, an exp or expanding an existing small dollar loan program. Please note that our awards cannot be used to make loans directly to consumers. Again, these are all statutory requirements. In this slide, we just want to share a few examples of um, the successful applicants who are now small dollar loan program recipients, how they propose to use the awards um, in their applications. Um, and, and, you, and you can see, um, I'm not going to uh, go through each bullet here, um, but um, a couple I do want to highlight is that um, um, one successful recipient, and actually I think we saw this with a few um, um, applicants who are now recipients, are that they're going to uh, use a loan loss reserve award um, to uh, attract capital from investors that require a higher reserve. Uh, given that small dollar loans um, are, tend to be on the riskier side. Um, and then um, there were uh, uh, successful applicants um, um, who are now recipients that will be using their TA awards to expand um, or establish uh, a process in back-end processing of their small dollar loans. So um, again, these are just uh, examples of uh, of, of, of the many um, uh, possible uses for, for the Small Dollar Loan Program awards. The award um, amount ranges are, are here um, for um, those that are interested in technical assistance awards. Uh, those awards range from $10,000 to $150,000. And then those that are interested in a loan loss reserve award those awards range from 20,000 to 350,000. And, and the, I want to spend a, just a few minutes talking about the loan loss reserve award range in particular. And um, that's going to be based on your, your projected small dollar lending over the three year period of performance. So you'll provide that information in your application, um, and, and, you know, and through your narrative, provide support for. Uh, why you are requesting what you are requesting. And then, um, as it's stated here, um, the award amount will be based on up to 20% of, again, of your, your three-year projected um, loans to be closed over the three-year period of performance, um, again, not to exceed $350,000. It's been, I want to spend a few minutes now just going over the applicant eligibility. Um, again, they, they, uh, all of this is based on statutory requirements. Um, and so per the statute, uh, there are three eligible applicant types. Um, the first eligible applicant type is um, um, certified CDFIs applying individually. Um, the second eligible applicant type is, is a partnership. It's a partnership between a certified CDFI and a federally insured depository institution we refer to as a FIDI um, that has a primary mission to serve targeted investment areas. And then the third eligible applicant type um, is partnerships between two or more certified CDFIs. Now, the statute further um, delineates between um, eligible applicant types and, and the award type. So if you are interested in a loan, a loan loss reserve award, the eligible um, applicants for that are 
certified CDFIs applying individually or if you are applying um, as a partnership between a certified CDFI and a FIDI. If you're, el if you're interested in being considered for a technical assistance award, eligible applicants are um, CDFIs, uh, certified CDFIs applying individually or um, partnerships between two or more certified CDFIs. And if you are, are interested in applying for both a loan loss reserve award as well as a technical assistance award, the only eligible applicant type is if you are applying individually as a certified CDFI. So again, this is all based on statutory requirements. I, I hope all of that's clear. And I should have said at the outset that um, in addition to the web, this webinar being recorded, we are going to post this presentation to our website in the next few days. So you'll have the recording as well as this presentation um, in the next few days. And, and, and um, before we end this webinar, we will provide contact information should you have any follow-up questions, um, you know, post at the Q&A period. The next slide talks about the prohibitive practices. So, uh, so to be uh, to receive a, a small dollar loan program award, um, your, your small dollar loan program or products um, um, cannot engage in any of the following practices or loan characteristics. And I'm just going to just list them here or, or cite them as they're listed here. But please note that our, our NOFA goes into more detail about each one. So um, our awards will um, not su support uh, high rate loans. Um, they will not support programs or practices where um, there, there's coerced automatic loan payments, where there's excessive refinancing, where there's, auto, where there's loan insurance or credit card add-ons. Um, where um, the loans are secured, um, if there, if the, where there are excessive late fees on missed loan payments or abusive overdraft practices or aggressive debt collection practices, or there's forced arbitration to deal with um, delinquent debt. So again, these are prohibitive practices that our awards will not, will not support. Um, support the loan programs, small dollar loan programs. Again, um, they are listed and defined in the NOFA should you um, need further clarification or have questions. Now, now likewise, um, we are prioritizing funding for applicants that propose um, to offer small dollar loan programs that have any of these characteristics listed here. So if you, for example, um, have a small dollar loan program or propose to offer a small dollar loan, small dollar loan program that um, makes decisions within, uh, I'm sorry, that have loan terms within 90 days. Um, again, your, your application will, will be uh, reviewed more favorably. If you use um, the ability to repay underwriting that considers both the borrower's um, income as well as expenses, if you make loan decisions within uh, one business day after receiving all required documentation, documentation. Um, if you offer a reduction in the borrower's loan rate, if that borrower elects to use automatic debt, uh, debit payment, or if you offer automatic saving features where the regularly um, scheduled payments um, portion may go into establishing a savings account for that borrower, assuming um, that that um, it, is, it is all still affordable to the borrower, and if you offer access to financial um, education and credit counseling. Again, more detail in, in our NOFA about the, the prioritized um, practices. So moving on to um, our application evaluation process, and, and again, um, this is all in the, the NOFA, so I strongly encourage you to, to review the NOFA um, afterwards. Um, so uh, the CDFI fund staff will review the applic each application based on the, the following factors listed here. Um, we will use uh, the application assessment tool. And, and, and I, 
for those who have applied for, um, for example, um, a CDFI program award, FA or, or TA, um, or HFFI, then you're, you're probably well familiar with the application assessment tool analysis that we use as part of our um, evaluation process. Um, um, so specific to the Small Dollar Loan Program, we also review your business strategy and your, um, your community impact um, section. So we will look at your analysis of the um, of the need of the financing of the small dollar financing gap. Um, we will also look at your, uh, how you propose to use the award, um, as well as, as if your program pro, um, proposes to offer any of the, the preferred or prioritized lending practices that I, I just talked about. Um, we'll also look at your track record. Um, and, and, and note that if you are starting a new, uh, a new program, um, you know, not having a track record will not, you will not be penalized for that. So just want to make it clear that um, we are looking at the track record if there, want, if there is one that exists. Um, and then, um, and most importantly, we are looking at your growth and your projections on, um, on how the award will be used, the number of small dollar loans, for example, that, we made, that will be made over a three-year period of performance. And so after we go through this process, um, 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 each application will, re will receive a low risk, a medium risk, or a high risk score. And those applications that receive a high risk score at this phase will not receive further consideration for an award. So um, moving on to the sizing, um, again, we are, uh, once we've, we've, we've made a decision, um, um, we are going to, you know, look more closely at the, the, our due diligence, um, the applicant's requested um, award amount, their uh, projected lending, small dollar lending over three-year period performance. Um, um, we will also look at those applic applicants that are located in persistent poverty counties. There, there will not be um, a, a PPC commitment you will need to make um, as required for our other programs, but we do look to see if the applic applicants are located in a, in a PPC. Um, and so that may factor into the award size as well. And then um, the applicant's risk rating will um, also be factored in as we are determining um, final award amounts. And once all those decisions have been made, you've been selected to receive an award. We have um, um, sized um, the award based on um, um, the factors I just, uh, I just discussed. Um, then, um, if, again, you're selected to receive an award. Um, each applicant must enter into an assistance agreement with the CDFI fund to become a recipient and to receive payment. Um, and then for those who, again, if, if you are a previous CDFI fund recipient, whether it's a small dollar loan program award or one of the other programs, then you're, you're, you're um, very well familiar with the assistance agreement. Um, each agreement is, uh, well, our, our agreement um, has a three-year period of performance. Um, the agreement, as you know, it, it, it um, provides the, the amount of the award, um, as well as the approved award uses. Uh, the agreement will also um, list the performance goals and measures, um, as well as the, the reporting requirements. Um, so again, so it, it, this is all information um, that will, that's in the NOFA, um, that again will be posted on our website in the, in the next few days, um, should you have you know, follow-up questions or need additional information. I will now turn the presentation over to Julie, and she's going to walk you through the process to apply for a Small Dollar Loan Program Award. Julie? Thanks, Tanya. So I'm here today to talk more about the application process and the application itself. The application process is a two-step process that requires the submission of two separate documents with two different deadlines, and they're also submitted through two different online systems. The major parts of the application are part one, the SS-424, the standard form 424, 
This is submitted via grants.gov, and this form starts your application. Part two is the small dollar loan program application. This is where you'll be answering the narrative, completing financial data, and talking about your small dollar loan products and projections. So I'll talk, spend a few minutes talking about what you're looking at the application. Tanya already touched up on it. So the first section of organizational questions, um, these are pre-populated, and this includes information from AMIS. So you should review, and if you need to make any changes, you will need to go to the organization detail page within AMIS. Next, executive summary, and then the business and strategy community impact section. This is a part of the application where you will discuss the narrative form, and explain via charts and tables what are the financing gaps and challenges you're seeing, what is your proposed use for the award. That, um, in addition to the tables, we'll kind of want to understand the features of your small dollar lending products, as well as the track record and projections. The projections are based on activities undertaken as a result of the requested small dollar loan program award. Next section is key personnel. Here, it's, we want to understand who will be involved in managing the Small Dollar Loan Program Award. And we recommend that you suggest the individuals that will be most important. You can select up to 10 individuals. Question 14 um, is where CDFI fund previous awards. This is pre-populated again for Amos. Please verify the information is correct, and you will have to reach out to the Amos Help Desk if there are any issues. The next sections are the financial health and compliance risk. You'll be answering questions and also be providing financial data. Um, please refer to the application guidance. There's a financial data glossary located within the appendix, and this will guide um, if you have any questions on particular terms. So that is a general overview of the application. Uh, many of you, maybe you submitted an application last year, so we did, uh, for our first year. We did take um, into consideration some requests for public comment, sorry, requests for public comment and CDFI fund staff proposals. And, and you'll see a couple of changes uh, based on the, the feedback. The primary one was that we reduced the number of tables that applicants must complete. Um, as well as the number of data points within the track record and projection table. So we hope that you view this as an enhancement. And in certain sections, we increase the character limits for certain narrative questions to make sure that we were, you'll be able to provide the amount of space and explain um, more about your program. Just a couple of quick reminders here. Uh, there's a lot of documents and different pieces to submit. Please refer to the application guidance and all the materials listed in Table 2, um, and, the, and that's part of the guidance. That includes what audits you need to submit and additional information. Um, we also only accept applications if they're submitted via the templates on grants.gov or amis.gov. And finally, applicants are only allowed one application submission within AMIS. So important dates coming up. We've just opened the round two weeks ago. The next date is June 15th, where you will be required to submit your SF-424 document, as well as this is the date where you will need to ensure that you're registered with an AMIS and your EIN and UEI is updated with an AMIS and also across SAM.gov and grants.gov. After that, um, I know it's busy time, the 30 days after that is when the electronic application within the ANUS is due, July 15th, so uh, about 45 days away from today. So I know we've thrown a lot of information at you, and we expect to hear many of questions. Uh, depending on the type of question, we've listed all the resources for you. Uh, if you need to reach out to the CDFI fund, myself, Tanya, and our, our broader team, please submit a service request. Uh, we are available and we try to respond as soon as we can. And with that, I want to pass it back to, 
Tanya, see if we have any questions. We look forward to hearing from you. Great, thank you, Julie. Um, and, and as Julie said, um, I, I echo her, her comments. We know that this is a lot of information um, to receive in, in a short period of time. So please, um, please uh, reach out to us, as, as Julie um, stated before um, in the previous, in the previous slides. Um, and again, uh, this, re this webinar is being recorded. It will be posted along with the presentation to our website um, for you to refer to as well. Um, so with that, thank you all for participating in today's webinar. And um, we are um, happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question or make a comment from the phones, please press star 1. Make sure your phone is unmuted and record your name to introduce your question. And you may press star 2 to withdraw that request. Again, for questions or comments at this time, please press star 1 and you must record your name to introduce your question. One moment, please. We do have a question or comment coming from Holly Logue. Your line is open. Hi, Tanya, Holly Logue. Um, I have a question with regard to the track record. What if uh, an institution has some, a small dollar program, but perhaps their historic track record doesn't meet all of your criteria? So would they be considered launching a new program that ensures they meet all five criteria as well as per, perhaps some of the preferred uh, characteristics and not reflect a track record if their historic lending didn't follow all the five mandatory criteria? How should we handle that? Yeah. Hi, Holly. Good to hear from you. So that's a great question. Um, so again, it's the, the, the statute is, is pretty clear on what our awards will support. So first and foremost, just make sure if you're starting a new program or ex expanding an existing program that the, the small dollar loan loans that you make um, are, are, are line up with, with the statutory requirements. Now, if you do have um, a question about, uh, you know, track record and perhaps a track record that doesn't, where the loans do not meet the statutory requirements, I would say, you know, to, to definitely, um, you know, talk about your track record um, and, and just state that, you know, our, the, our loans, you know, just state. state right. So that was my, my thought was, so in the table, for example, we would not list it if it didn't meet the statutory criteria, but we could talk about it in the narratives. We had something similar, but now we're going to start a new one. I just wanted to make sure that was, I want you to see our track record, and I didn't know any other way to handle it other than address it in the narratives. Yeah, I think that would be the best way to go. Okay, yeah, thanks. And, and if you have any follow-up questions, Holly, you can please um, submit a service request or reach out to us directly. But, I, yeah, I think that would be the best thing to do. Great. Thank you, Tanya. Sure. Thank you. And, again, as a reminder for questions or comments, it is star 1. Make sure your phone is unmuted and record your name to introduce your question. And you may press star 2 to withdraw that request. Our next question or comment comes from Kimberly Shirley. Your line is open. Hello. Yes, um, I have a question related to the Technical Assistance Award, um, specifically software. I understand in your beginning comments you said that we could use the TA award to expand or create um, processing the small dollar loans, but um, I really kind of need a little bit more specifics as far as does that mean an app? Does that mean only related to developmental services? Does that only relate to reporting to credit bureaus? What exactly does that narrow down to mean? Sure. Sure, Kimberly. Thank you for your question. So, again, I strongly encourage you to review the NOFA. The, the NOFA goes into more detail about the eligible uses. And now, with respect to the Technical Assistance Awards, um, the eligible uses are, are based on OMB's um, uniform administrative requirements for how TA can be used. Um, but if, if you are, 
if, if you if you want to start a new small dollar loan program and you need to upgrade your technology system, then you can use the TA award for that. Of course, you're going to explain all of that um, in the narrative uses of, of, of award and all of that. So that's an example. Um, if, if you want to develop, um, um, again, you want to start a program, but you need to develop underwriting criteria, policies and procedures, et cetera. Again, um, that, that would be deemed an eligible use um, um, an eligible, eligible use for for the technical assistance. So it really de it really depends on what your 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 business strategy is, what your business plan is, and then making sure that that lines up with the eligible uses um, as stated in the uh, in the NOFA. Did, Kimberly, did I answer your question? Does that help? Well, software is not mentioned in the NOFA, so that's where I kind of needed a little bit more guidance because that can range from, you know, a variety of different operational uses. Okay. Let me – I don't. I, I should have the NOFA and I'm not, right I'm now. I'm certainly not trying to be difficult. I just want to make sure that – No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a fair question, and we want to make sure um, – that, you know, one, we are answering your question and providing the guidance you need so that you can be informed on whether or not this would be a useful award for you. So let, let us look into that a little bit more. I, I do believe Thank you. software is an eligible technology. It can be used for technology. That's one of the statutory requirements. Um, and okay. I can chime in. So, and again, it's, it's, a lot of it varies software, but so are you using equipment is typically where it would fall into, but maybe you're using a consultant to implement, I, I'm just say so, a, right. a particular software. Well, so I think um, there's a kind of different ways, but uh, we can respond to you um, separately. Okay. That. Well, I think that the tangible personal property is where the disconnect is for me because I don't think about software as being tangible, but yet we've had um, a lot of great ideas from people, and we definitely want to utilize those, like creating an app or creating an online system where they can apply for the small dollar. So mm, those are the okay. types of okay. examples just right off the top of my head that we've kind of heard to use to use the award monies for. So, but I definitely want to make sure that's in line with, with what you're expecting. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll do a little, bit, a little bit more research. And what we, what we will probably do then, um, uh, we'll probably up a, update our FAQs um, right. just to make sure, in, in case other people may have the same question. Um, that it, well, it your, F, one of your FAQs, number 29, in fact, kind of alludes to that. It, it asks about um, the capacity to report payments to consumer agencies, and it says that reporting to credit agencies is an eligible expense under development services. So I could see where that would be used in development services to report to credit agencies. The way that you would make that happen would, of course, be technology by way of software. So maybe I'm just not using the correct terms, but I appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, and I'm currently showing no further questions. Again, for a question or comment, please press star 1. Make sure your phone is unmuted, and you must record your name to introduce your question, and you may press star 2 to withdraw that request. Again, for questions or comments, please press star 1. One moment, please. And we do have a question or comment coming from Caleb Selby. Your line is open. Hi, Tanya. My name is Caleb. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you have any guidance on how returning applicants, if they won a small dollar loan program award last year, whether or not that will be taken into account at all. I know we uh, have to report previous CDFI fund awards um, in the small dollar loan application, so I'm wondering if there's any guidance on if returning applicants will be viewed differently. Um, and then I have a sort of a follow-up question after that as well. Sure, Caleb. So we, we strongly encourage um, re repeat applicants, whether you, you uh, were selected rec to receive an award or not. 
again, just make sure you're, if you um, plan to apply for this year's funding, um, just make sure your application um, um, clearly um, articulates the proposed uses of um, a small dollar loan program award um, and also talks about, you know, projections, et, et cetera. Um, Caleb, I, I, would, I would say one thing to focus on if you are um, a previous small dollar loan, loan program recipient um, is that make sure that when you're reporting on, the, on, the, on your projections that you are reporting on new loans to be made. Uh, new loans in addition to what you provided um, in your application um, um, last year um, um, in your projections last year. So, uh, so I guess yes. I guess the best way to say it is just making sure that it, your, your 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 projected closed loans um, should represent new loans um, that will be made with the support. Of a, of a of a 22 small dollar loan program award. Yeah, and I appreciate you addressing that point because that was my follow up question. Is uh, you know for some of the other CD5 fund programs, there's uh, different tools in place um, to to sort of require a higher amount of projections than the previous year. And I didn't see anything. I didn't see any tools like that in. Um, in, you know, in this year's small dollar loan program materials. So, um, yeah, I think maybe some more yeah. some more details on how you all are viewing that would be helpful. Sure. Yeah. And, and we're actually we're going to like as I said uh, to to Kimberly, we will um, we will be updating our FAQs, and so we will um, add a a a, a question a FAQ about about this so that it, it's clear. Um, how you should be reporting your projections, and then also what's to be expected should you be selected to receive an, an award. That would be super helpful. I appreciate that. Okay, great. Thanks, Caleb. We got it. Thank you. Our next question or comment comes from Jessica Grosvick. Your line is open. Yes, um, I have a question. We are a brand new CDFI. And I was told that this is a competitive grant and that I may should not apply for it. And I'm just wondering if that's true or how that process actually works. Hmm. Well, it, it, it is a competitive um, application process. And as, as long as you meet the criteria um, stated that we, we talked about early in the presentation, such as you're a certified CDFI. Um, your small dollar loan program will meet the statutory requirements as stated in, in the statute. So, you know, things that we talked about earlier in the presentation, if you, if you meet those parameters, um, you, you should be fine. Are there any, is there any, any particular concern you may have that may prevent you from being eligible to apply? No, I don't specifically have a small dollar loan program now. and. The person I spoke to told me that I would need to show that I had done lending in that area and had a successful program. But when I was, you know, listening to what you said, you you said basically that you could start a new program with it. So yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You so can as definitely. Long as I have those, yeah, that, that was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jessica. Just as long as I have a program in place that I intend to follow the guidelines and it meets the criteria, then I would be eligible. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Um, again, the the the, the, statute, the statute is is very clear that our awards um, will be used to support the creation of a new small dollar loan program or the expansion of an existing small dollar loan program. So just you know, if, if there is a, a need in your community, um, and you can communicate that via the narrative the, the narrative section about how you plan and will use the award, you understand the financing, the small dollar financing gaps that exist, um, where again, you feel that you can, um, you know, fill those gaps. Um, you, present the, you present a strong case, um, and you meet all the other parameters as stated in the NOFA, I, I strongly encourage you to uh, apply. Where can I find the criteria again? 
Yes, if you um, if, if you go to our website, um, cdfifund.gov, um, 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 go to programs, um, the programs link, which will list all of our programs, and then one of the selections is the small dollar loan program. Click on that, and that's where you can get detailed information about the small dollar loan program. It will um, have information on how you can apply uh, for an award. Um, it will also include, um, we, we had a pre-application webinar on April 27th. Um, it will include that, uh, that webinar, the recording for that webinar, as well as the presentation that we used for that webinar. Um, again, in the next few days, today's webinar will be recorded. The presentation um, we just walked you through will also um, be posted to the website. Um, so a lot of information, um, and also um, I, I encourage you also just send us a, a service request, and then we can reach out to you um, directly um, to also um, provide some additional assistance if needed. And then we have our second webinar on, on June 22nd, which is pretty much going to be a repeat of, of what we're, we're talking about here. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And again, as a reminder for questions or comments, it is star one. Make sure to unmute your phone and record your name, and you may press star two to withdraw that request. Our next question or comment comes from Allison Brown. Your line is open. Hello. Thank you for um, putting together this information. Very helpful. I have um, two questions. Under your prohibited practices, um, where it says high rate loans, um, is there a particular um, rate range that's considered high, or are you just following NCUA guidelines? Thanks, Allison, for your question. Um, yeah, the NOFA actually uh, goes into more uh, more detail about the um, about each prohibitive practices and provides a description for each one. So, with respect to the um, high interest rate. Um, it, it, it is based on what your state um, requirements are um, and, and not to exceed 36%. So okay. again, the, yeah. So again, um, the, the NOFA provides the description. Um, and again, it's, it's, the, it's the lower of the all-inclusive 30, 36% um, or the rate set by your state agency that oversees, oversees your financial institution. Gotcha. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Also, um, my second question is on the um, software technology area. Um, could you use those funds for an existing software or technology as long as it falls within the guidelines, or does it have to be new? No, 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 well, if you're going to use it to upgrade your existing technology or um, you, you need to talk about how you plan to use the award. Um, you know, we, we don't want it to, but I, I rephrase that. You, you would just need to explain how, how you're going to use the award to start a new program or to expand an existing program. Okay, so if we had maybe some type of budgeting tool, say, already offered within our app that would help um, small dollar loan participants manage um, their you know, financialized better. We already had that feature, but we, you know, wanted to expand on it or intend to use it to help um, financial counseling. We could use that money for that, even though it's already existing. Yes, yeah. Again, provide, you know, talk about it in the narrative, again, how you're going to use the award. Yeah, explain it okay. as long as it's an eligible use per, as stated in the NOFA. Yeah, we will okay, consider that, you. yes. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, and I'm currently showing no further questions or comments. Again, as a reminder, it is star one. Make sure your phone is unmuted and record your name to introduce your question, and you may press star two to withdraw that request. Again, for questions or comments at this time, please press star one and record your name and star two to withdraw that request. And we're standing by for any further questions or comments. One moment, please.
And again, as a reminder, that's star 1 and record your name for a question or comment at this time, and star 2 to withdraw that request. And standing by for any questions or comments, one moment. And I'm currently showing no further questions or comments at this time. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Um, and thank you all for your participation. Thank you all for your interest. Thank you all for everything that you're doing in your communities to help those who are unbanked, underbanked, those that are distressed and underserved. So thank you all so much for what, for what you are doing. Um, and, and we hope that um, we are providing the tools that you need so that you can continue doing the great work that you're doing. Um, this is the second year of the Small Dollar Loan Program, um, and we're really excited about it. Last year's um, round um, was uh, exceeded our expectations. Um, the, the, the request for funding um, um, was double, was more than double the amount of money we had available. So um, that just speaks to the, the, the need that exists. So thank you all again. Um, this presentation webinar will be posted to our web, to our website in addition to the, the, the PowerPoint presentation. Um, please uh, reach out to us at any point um, 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 whenever you um, may have a question, need clarification, need assistance. We are um, more than willing to provide assistance as needed. So again, thank you all um, for, uh, for, for participating in today's webinar and have a great day, and um, we'll be talking soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. That concludes today's conference call. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.